Welcome back, everybody. I know I've been away for a little while, and you can expect that from me. <laughs> I'm not uh, really in tune with the YouTube stuff. I don't care if you smash to subscribe or whatever it is everybody asks you to do. I kind of do these videos for myself, more of a, um, a log of stuff that I have and whatnot. I've been, over the years, I've kept documents and stuff of all the different uh, firearms I've owned and this stuff gets lost or misplaced or it's, it doesn't kept up to date and I just thought this would be a good way for me to do something a little bit different a uh, more enjoyable way to log my firearms and um, something that uh, my kids could look at someday if the if the firearms are still around and know a little bit about them and what their history is on them personally and firearm wise what their history is and I don't know that's kind of where I'm at with this so if I'm not on for a couple months it's just because I lost interest in doing it for a while or or whatever but anyway if any of you will all get anything out of these videos that's just an added bonus and I appreciate it um, I do try to answer questions and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I hope you all enjoy them. If not, that's okay too. They're not very professional. Um, I consider myself somewhat knowledgeable on firearms, but I am no, by no means a book. So sometimes I may say stuff that's outdated or, or even wrong. Feel free to correct me. But anyway, uh, kind of been sitting in limbo on doing any videos for a while and you know, I, I'm still interested in the firearms and stuff, and I have, I go from one thing to another. I mean, I have, for a while, I'll be into my Smith & Wesson revolvers, and then my, my Colt 1911s or whatever. Sometimes I move over to Glock for a little bit. And I just kind of lost interest in doing it, even on the stuff that I was interested in. So today, I thought, you know what, I just grabbed something from the safe that I have, and at this particular time I have no interest in and it is actually probably on a list small list of stuff you know trading stuff for trade or that I may try to trade in for something else that I want or I've just had it for a long time and never shot it and this is one of those uh, one of those guns I do really like Heckler and Coke um, I have three or four Heckler and Coke pistols I have couple USPs and a um, HK45C. I like them all, but I don't shoot this one hardly at all. I'm probably only taking it to the range maybe two or three times in the probably the 12 years I've had it. Uh, I traded for this gun at a gun shop north of here up in St. Charles. Traded a lever action rifle for it. it I had wanted a nine millimeter full size i just something about them you know uh, the hk usps i wanted one really bad and i wanted one in a nine uh, the heckler and coke usp series and you there's a lot of videos on them you can learn a lot more from other people but they are very overbuilt tough reliable durable and very well made i always con considered them kind of a as far as the polymer pistols go the Cadillac Glock you know except for they're not striker fired they're hammer fired but nonetheless uh, this one here is a obviously an HK USP full size a nine millimeter I picked it up used about 12 years ago like I said I believe the gun is a police trade-in of some sort it uh, originally it had the LEM trigger system in it which at the time I wasn't overly interested in, although when I got it and I played with it a little bit, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, had a really light pull that pulled the hammer back to a point where you could feel, you know, at the trip it was going to trip and fire. It was, you know, it's a double action only, and really without actually operating one, having me explain to you how it works is probably not the best. But anyway, like I said, this gun came equipped with the LEM. Uh, I converted it to the version 1, which is the uh, single action, double action with safety and a decocker. I also added a ambidextrous safety lever because I am a lefty. 
Uh, I know people talk about these not having very good ergonomics, but I find them, they fit my hand pretty good and fairly comfortable. I don't have any issues with them. Uh, riding your thumb on the safety when it's firing. I know people said it tends to decock. I've never had that happen. But it, it's it's only been a range gun. I've never used it for any serious work or carried it or anything. It's a little large for a 9mm as far as carry gun. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm sure a lot of people do. But it is uber reliable and way, way overbuilt. I mean, it is just like... It's, it's a tough gun, and all the USP series is. This one here also has the uh, jet funnel kit, which consists of a, basically a grip extender that screws to the bottom of the gun, extends the grip a little bit, and they use these larger 18-round uh, mags. The typical USP full-size and 9mm is going to hold 15. They'll have a black polymer, I believe it's polymer, magazine, probably metal-lined. This one here, I believe, is just metal lined in the, the top portion of it. Uh, they do have black ones of these now um, that I believe are considered to be a, like a second gen, probably more metal lined than these are. I've never had a problem with these, although, you know, to be honest, like I said, I haven't put a whole lot of rounds through it. But I do, I have about six of these mags. They all work flawlessly. And I leave several of them loaded for years. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, and they still work. So, uh, yeah, I need to get it to the range again, maybe get reacquainted with it a little bit. I haven't used this gun for a long time. It's been probably five or six years since the last time it's even been to the range, and I couldn't even say that for sure. But anyway, it's typical USP for those of you who aren't familiar. Safety is double action, single action, so it can be carried with the hammer down in double action mode where first, first try... Uh, Shot is double action mode, and then when the gun is fired, it's single action mode thereafter with the hammer back on a light trigger pull. Uh, it can be carried also cocked and locked like a 1911, like that with the safety on and the hammer back, or you know, decock it with the hammer down, double action mode with safety off, or if you feel like you need the extra margin of safety with the safety on about as safe as you're going to get. This one here is equipped with night sights, although they're they're a little faint. I mean, they still work, but I don't know if they're good enough for actual use, but um, it does have night sights on it. It also has a rack number scribed in the bottom, 21. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Which... Uh, had uh, one of the mags was also scribed with a 21, not this one, but anyway, this gun here is an AF date code, which I believe is 2004. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's 2004. German made gun, so it's going to have the serial number on the barrel, the cylinder, I'm sorry, the, the slide, and the frame. This one here, I put a GG and G uh, rail adapter on it if I ever want to put a light on it, which I have put a light on it. But to be honest with you, all the lights I have, my fingers still won't reach the button. So, I mean, I'm sure I have a TLRS 7 that has longer buttons on it. I haven't put it on here yet to see how it works. But, I mean, you can't reach it and activate any of the regular lights I have, the stream lights and whatnot, without changing your grip to hit it. But other than that, I mean, if you're wanting to adapt to a gun that's similar to, and if you're familiar with 1911s, you want to adapt to a polymer gun, uh, you like old school stuff, which I can't believe I'm calling this old school, but I guess I'm old school too. Uh, this is a good gun to go with. It has the same manual arms as a 1911 if you can want to carry it cocked and locked. Um, and uh, I mean, I've never had an issue with this gun as far as reliability. It's accurate as far as pistols go, accurate than I am. Um, as far as takedown, let's see if I remember. So push on the slide stop from this side, line that notch on the slide with that portion of the slide stop. Then you can pull that out. And uh, the slide just comes off like that. Magazine, I'm assuming, needs to be out. 
the USPs have the double recoil spring, which in a nine millimeter, um, you know, it is what it is. I can't say it is particularly soft shooting compared to my other nine millimeters. It's a pretty blocky gun. So, I mean, I mean, I guess it's good that it has it, but I don't know that it needs it. And the hammer forged cannon grade barrels, I suppose that they put in there. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, slide that in there. Now the the half circle needs to be on the bottom. And then you just slide that back on through there. Line up that notch in the slide with the cutout in the frame. Slide that through. Then, and that's it. Um, see if there's anything else I can tell you about this gun. Um, they came out in the early 90s. Uh, this gun was originally, the USP was originally designed as a 40, from what I remember. Remember the 40s being out first, right about the time the 40 Smith & Wesson came out, which probably would have been 1990-ish. I think these came on the scene a couple years later. The first one I really remember being chambered in the 40 was the SIG 229, and then I remember this one. And then the, the 9mm came out a little bit later, I think along with the uh, USP-45, which I also have one of those. I'll do a video on it later. Um, anyway, it's been in continuous production. The USP has since that time. Hasn't changed any. Uh, still has the proprietary rail, which is mine, why mine has a rail adapter. There's only one light that'll fit on this gun properly. And that's the, uh, oh gosh, it's, I think it's called the Mark Insight Mark II. HK also branded it under their name. You'd have to look it up. But uh, it, it looks it looks good on these guns, but finding one these days is they're few and far between, and people probably are paying collector prices for them now. And by today's technology standards, they're pretty weak, so more of a novelty at this point. But the guns are great. I mean, you can't go wrong with a USP if that's the type of gun you're looking for, full size or compact. This one here, also, I will say, it is a little bit of an oddball. Uh, it has the Heckler and Coke on the uh, right side of the slide, which normally they don't have that. You just have the uh, HK USP 9x19 and the various uh, proof stamps and whatnot serials on this side. Then this side of the slide is usually blank. Um, I've only seen one other gun USP 9mm with Heckler and Coke on the side of the, the slide. Uh, does it make it rare? Yes. Does it make it valuable? Probably not. Um, I doubt it adds any value to the gun. It's just a neat little novelty that I've noticed about this particular gun. I don't know if they did them like that for a police contract or, or whatever, but my take on it is uh, this is odd, and uh, most of them don't have that. That being said, I could care less. I, if it didn't have it, it wouldn't matter. I think it'd probably look a little bit slicker without it, but it is what it is. If it makes the gun worth more, I'm all much more happy for that, but I, it, it doesn't. Um, unless somebody's got some insight on that, can explain that one to me. I'd love to hear that I've hit the mother load, and this is the holy grail of, of HK collecting because it has the roll stamp on the side. It's worth about ten grand now. So, yeah, that's what I want to hear. I also want to hear somebody wants to buy it for that. So anyway, moving on. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, 18 round mags, which makes it, you know, 19 shot with one in the chamber. Uh, it's a big gun. It's a full size, what I call a duty, duty pistol. Uh, something you would carry most likely not concealed, although I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, anyway, you all have a good day and I hope you enjoyed it.